Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at what is the lowest cost and most portable ATSC3 over-the-air TV tuner that you can buy on the market right now. This is from a company called GT Media, and they call it the HD TV Mate. What you do is you plug the USB end into an Android device that can include a smart television, a phone, a TV box, a tablet. You plug the other end here into an antenna, and it will pull in whatever ATSC3 and ATSC1 signals it can pick up. Because it is so affordable, you can pretty much guess where I'm going next. This does not support the new encryption that broadcasters are putting in place on many ATSC3 broadcasts. So if you're in an area where those channels are encrypted, you can't pick those up. You can get the ATSC1 signals. But in my area, where half my channels are still available unencrypted, it actually works quite well. Unfortunately, its low price tag likely won't continue if they're required to get certified for DRM and have to pay all those licensing fees that they'll have to go through. But in the meantime, we will take a look and see what this device is all about and how well it tunes television. And we're going to get into that in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this TV tuner stick is all about. Now the price point on this right now is $59, which I think is a pretty good price for an ATSC3 tuner. So let's take a quick look at the hardware. You saw the USB connector here at the outset. They do include a couple of cables in the box. So you've got a USB-A to USB-C cable for attaching it to smartphones that require that. You also get a USB extension cable here for plugging it into a smart TV or a TV box. Now, depending on your particular situation, you might have to engineer a solution. So for example, the testing device that I use for this review is this on box that I got recently. And unfortunately, it only has a single USB port that it uses for power. But a little while back, I bought this device here from Esmaze, and this includes three USB ports and an Ethernet jack. So what I did is I plugged the Esmaze in here, I connected it to power through its power port here, and then I connected the tuner to the USB port, and that worked out just fine for me. One thing that I noticed with it, though, is that if I plugged in the tuner after I booted the on box up, it reset. So just be uh, prepared to get everything set up before you plug it all in. But there are solutions that work if your device only has a single USB port. A lot of smart TVs running Android do have USB ports built in. So you should be able to just plug this right into it and get going. I connected the other end here to my huge antenna on the roof, which work fine for receiving channels. And I'll show you that in a minute. Additionally, you've got an SD card slot on here because this does have some rudimentary DVR capabilities where it can record whatever is currently on television. So if you have a card in there, this will show up not only as a TV tuner for its app, but it also shows up as a card reader where that app can write its media to. As you'll see in a minute though, I could not get this feature to work in my testing. Now, as I mentioned at the outset, you do need an Android device for this to work. It will not work on a Samsung television, on an LG TV or a Roku television. Your TV needs to be running Android TV or Google TV in order for this to be compatible. It's because it relies on an app to do its business. But if you are on an Android device and you have this plugged in, it will go out initially and scan the air for channels that it can pick up, both ATSC3 and ATSC1 channels. That process took about five minutes or so on my uh, setup here. It may take longer depending on your device and conditions, but once it's done, you will get a channel guide that you can browse through to begin watching live television. I did find the interface to be lacking a bit. You don't have a real nice grid to look through. It's kind of uh, all over the place, to be honest with you, but it is enough that you can kind of figure out where things are. It will download channel guide data so you can see what's coming up on each channel as you scroll through. It tunes channels relatively quickly. I think the tuning speed will vary based on what device it is plugged into. So I had it plugged into this on device along with my Pixel 8 Pro smartphone. Both are fairly recent and modern and can support all the modern video formats. It didn't take all that long to flip through channels, although it wasn't as fast as it might be on a cable box or something that performs a little better. I did find that the ATSC3 channels, the ones that were not encrypted, 
did take a little bit of time to spin up, a little longer than the ATSC-1 channels, but it didn't feel all that longer versus some of the other ATSC-3 tuners we have tested recently. Now on the Pixel 8 phone and on my OnBox, I did not see any jittery playback. It seemed to be pretty solid and steady. Although I did notice on a 1080i ATSC-1 channel that the app was not de-interlacing the video. So we had interlacing lines when we had fast motion on screen. I'm not sure if that's a function of the OnBox or whether or not it will do that on every Android device that it's plugged into but that was definitely something that stuck out. Now, if you try to tune into an ATSC-3 encrypted broadcast, you will, of course, get a message on screen saying that it's unable to decrypt that channel. They do kind of hint that they might be seeking certification at a later time, but right now it only supports the unencrypted channels. Now, I also plugged it into a Pixel 8 Pro smartphone that in full disclosure came in free of charge from Google. Everything spun up just fine on there. In fact, the app looks identical on the phone as it does on the television which does make navigating a little trickier, but still it seems to work pretty well and channels came in quickly and clearly on the display. I really like the idea of having something like this that I could plug into an antenna out in the field, pop it into my smartphone and start watching live TV anywhere. And it's unfortunate the broadcasters are throwing so many roadblocks in the way for inexpensive and useful products like this to make it to market because I think this is really helpful for things like emergency response. Even if the cell phone network goes down, you could plug this into an antenna and see what's happening on television broadcasts. Now, as I mentioned at the outset, there's also an SD card slot on here that you can use to record whatever the tuner is receiving live. It doesn't have any scheduling capabilities at the moment. This is, of course, only a single tuner device, but if you're watching the news or something and you want to record it, you can hit the button midstream, record whatever it's picking up onto the card, and you could then watch it later. However, I was not able to get this feature to work either on my Google TV device or on my Android phone. Every time I hit the DVR button on the TV, it said my app doesn't support that. And on the phone, when I tapped on DVR, nothing happened. I suspect that they have to work in some permission requests to allow access to the file system because this SD card slot, even though it's built into the tuner, actually shows up as a separate device on your phone, basically an SD card reader. And I was just not able to get that to work. I know the antenna man did get it working in his review on the box that uh, they had sent over for uh, his evaluation. So I think it might just be an issue with some of the newer versions of Android. But right now, I was not able to get the recording to work on my unit at all. Now, I did find that the interface does need a little bit of polish. For example, when you are scrolling around the channel guide and select the channel, the guide doesn't disappear after you pick the channel you want to watch. You have to back out of it manually. Additionally, you will get a very helpful information card that pops up when you tune into a channel. You'll know whether you're on ATSC 3 or 1, what audio format you're using, and there's even a signal strength indicator. The problem is, is that information panel disappears very quickly, and I couldn't figure out a way to pull it back up without having to tune off the channel and tune back onto it again. So there's a couple of things that they can adjust to make the interface, I think, feel a little more polished. But the playback, at least, in my experience, was just fine once you got a TV station going on the device. Now, there's also a helpful diagnostic that's kind of buried in the interface as well. So if you go over to the channel setup screen, which is where you started when you first plugged it in to get all the channels selected, you can actually tune to each individual channel and get a real-time signal report that you can use for getting your antenna pointed in the right direction. You can't watch what is being tuned in on that channel, but you can at least see it tuning to it and the signal strength so you can get your antenna into the right spot for the best reception. So overall, I would not consider this to be a primary tuning device, but if you are looking for a portable solution for tuning into ATSC 3 channels and ATSC 1 on your Android smartphone, this is a good solution. Once you get the TV channel pulled up, it actually plays back just fine. There's a lot of rough edges they have to stamp out on here, but what I found interesting about this product is that we see really how much an ATSC 3 tuner should cost. Not all that much, and unfortunately, these are not going to be inexpensive once all of the channels are encrypted, which is the broadcaster's plan. And I think neat little innovative products like this will likely not be something we see more of in the future 
if their DRM plans go through. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.